So it has been some time since I did a setup video talking about some of the things that I use on a daily basis. And I want to do a little bit of an update. Now, this isn't a full fledged full run through my setup simply because some things haven't changed. So I will link the last video I did in the video description so you can go watch that if you're interested. But there have been some major changes in the things that I'm using. So I want to take a look at some of those things today and kind of show them off because I've put some work into this stuff and I want to share it. So let's do that. But before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. Also notice that I cut my head off a little bit. I zoomed in too far. Well, what can you do? Anyways, let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing, obviously, is going to be NixOS. So if I actually take you here to my actual computer, you guys can actually see what's going on here. This is my NixOS config. I've been using this as of today for 42 days. I've made a couple of videos on it so far. There will be more content on NixOS to come, although I'm going to space that out a little bit because it seems that not a lot of you guys are actually interested in NixOS, so I don't want to inundate you guys with this content. But NixOS has been good so far mostly good. Now, I talked a little bit on the podcast, and I believe I talked a little bit on the Patreon podcast about my extra happiness, my jubilation, if you will, about being able to use DaVinci Resolve on NixOS and being able to abandon the Mac that I bought. Well, in traditional Resolve fashion, it broke. <laughs> that thing can't cannot stay stable on Linux for uh, through an update, unless you're Nate. If you're not him, you can't use Resolve on Linux for more than an update. I'm convinced of it. Or maybe it just hates me. I don't know. But anyways, an update came through on NixOS for DaVinci Resolve Studio. It broke. I spent like two days trying to fix it. Thought I had it fixed. Found out that I didn't have it fixed. So my jubilation has dimmed a little bit. But I'm still having a fairly good time. If I take you to this workspace, I believe, this is part of my NixOS configuration file, and I'll show you some of the apps here in a second. But I've gone through and created myself a flake. So I it's not a very complicated flake. Basically, what this is just doing is sourcing the file so that I can have modules instead of having one big long file. That's basically all I'm doing with flakes right now. But I've done that, and I've gone through and obviously installed a ton of packages. So I have quite a few packages here that I've installed. I've got some set up the true Nix fashion. So things like Vert Manager and Hyperland and Firefox and NH and all this kind of stuff set up in the Nix fashion. I also have Flatpak set up in the Nix fashion, meaning that it's all configured here or at least installed here through the configuration file. So NixOS has been fun to learn. I've, it's been over a month and I would not tell you that it's the best operating system I've ever used. I'm not saying that it's the worst. It's just been fun. I'm still at the point where I'm not convinced of why this is great. So I have taken my config and put it on my laptop. That was a cool experience because I just installed Nix, pointed it at my Nix configuration file, and installed all my applications. That's really cool. But that's it. <laughs> like, like that's That's the really only neat trick I've discovered so far. And I don't know that that's enough for me to say, hey, well, this is the best thing ever. Now, when Resolve was working and I thought it was going to work long term, man, did I, I was singing NixOS's praises. But since I Resolve broke, which is not a NixOS problem, I, I'm less, you know, effusive with my praise. But overall, it's been a good experience. I'll definitely make it the two years. So the next thing on the list that I want to show you, actually, is what you're staring at right now. This, of course, is Emacs. Yes, that is Emacs. And it's not Doom Emacs, that is Vanilla Emacs with all of the things that Vanilla Emacs comes with. Although, as I said on the podcast I was on recently, I have done my damnedest to go through and make this as much like NeoVim as possible. And I've succeeded. So evil mode is here. I've gone and, and made it so that everything you can imagine from Vim is basically here. I will say that I enjoy having variable font sizes. So when I'm in a markdown file or whatever, I can have headings and all that kind of stuff. That's cool. But honestly, I'm never going to be an Emacs guy. I've had fun configuring it. Basically, I'm using this on a bet. I'm going to win the bet. I guarantee that. But needless to say, I'm using Emacs. I've had a fairly good time figuring some stuff out, you know, the stuff that, and it's just been whatever. It's, it's, I, I can't agree with a program that uses key cords so much. 
to be honest with you. Like, there's just too much here. So if I hit space here, uh, you'll actually see which key come out. And then there's a, another plethora of bindings that I've set up that are key chords, right? Well, if I do the same thing with like Meta X, which is Alt X, you're going to see a ton of extra stuff that I can do. Now, all that stuff has extra keys that are associated with it. So if you don't know it, you have to go through it. Key chords are just a little bit too much for me. I don't want that many key chords. I like key chords. I don't want them all to be key chords. So that's beside here there. Emacs has been an experience. I've made it further with Emacs this time than ever before. I will win the bet, but I'm going to run back to Vim as soon as uh, I beat Darth Vader into the ground. So the next thing I sh should actually show you is that, and this is not a productivity thing. This is just me being a ricing kind of guy. I have Pywall set up on this machine. Now, I'm not using it 100% of the time. I do have it so that I can change to my regular themes as well. But if I were to go find a wallpaper, so let's say I wanted to change to this wallpaper, I just hit a key binding here in Ranger, and it would actually change everything. So it would change, it would change my, my, terminal it would change emacs as you saw it ch it changes tmux it changes the bar it changes hyperland everything i think that that's pretty cool and, and i've worked pretty hard to get it so it's completely completely integrated with everything so even like all my posh which is what i use for my shell prompt there also takes its colors from pywall i've also set it up so uh, fast fetch will take the colors from Pywall when the colors change. Now I can, if I wanted to, change to another color scheme. So like Grovebox, we'll just change color Grovebox. Now, my one flaw so far is that Kitty won't automatically update its theme. I have to press a key binding in order to get that to be done. I don't know why that that is, but I can also choose from my other key, my other color schemes there. So I'm not just using Pywall, but I think that my Pywall setup is pretty damn cool. One of the cool things that I have set up now, I did a whole video on something called Zoxide. Zoxide is an amazing piece of software. It's how CD should work, and I can't live without it right now. So if I let's say if I wanted to go to my blog directory, my blog directory is not in my current working directory. So my current working directory is my fake home directory, which is mhome, and my blog directory is in documents, pages, Hugo and then the blog directory. So it's quite a few directories away. But if I wanted to go to it, I just do CD and M and then the words MTWB, which is the name of the folder, and it actually takes me to that particular path. Now that only works because I've been there before. Zoxide is amazing like that. It means I can basically get anywhere I want. So if I wanted to go to my, from here, I wanted to go to my Waybar configs, I could just type in way and it take me to my Waybar config. If I wanted to go to say my Emacs config, I could do that. If I wanted to go to say my path, so I wanted to go to my bin folder. So this is actually my local bin folder where all of my scripts are. If I wanted to go to my scripts folder, I want if I wanted to go to so I would just CD scripts and I'm in my scripts folder. So Zoxide is probably the tool that I would nominate for tool of the century because it is so good and it's just the way that CD should work. Like this is how CD should work. And if you are a developer on the C on the CD project, I would say fork Soxide and make it the thing because it works so so well. Now, obviously, people are gonna say, "Well, it's bloated. It, it tracks you, and that's all that stuff." May be true, but it can track me all at once. This is a fantastic, a fantastic tool. And when I say tracking, I just mean that it follows where you go. It's not sharing it anywhere. It's all local on your computer, but so don't get too upset about it. But still, Zoxite is fantastic. So another change in my workflow is my to-do application. So for probably 15 years, I've been using Todoist and that for whatever reason started having some major bug problems with the Flatpak. And Flatpak is the, basically the only way you can get Todoist on Linux. So I was looking for an alternative. Now I, I looked at like Task Warrior and several of the more FOSS related things, but I, they just don't do it the way that I want it to be done. So I have my to-do list application here. This is TickTick. -tick. Now, TickTick -tick is obviously proprietary. I do pay them for a, a yearly subscription because of some of the features that I wanted, but it's fantastic. It does all the stuff that to-do list did, not quite as well on the natural language stuff, but mostly there. It also has quite a few features like just being able to complete a 
a overdue task, a repeating task without it skipping a day. So what with to do, this is weird. So what like on Todoist, if I were say, if I were late on say my write daily note thing, it would go into the overdue column at midnight. If I were to then complete it at say like 1205, it would actually skip the current day and move to the next day. Whereas if I'm late with it on TickTick, I can complete it as part of the overdue process and it would still have it on today as it should, you know? So I don't know if I explained that right, but basically it's it's really good. So I like TickTick, the, the mobile app is also fantastic. I don't use it nearly as much as I, I did Todoist, but then I didn't use Todoist much on the mobile app either. So uh, TickTick is very, very good. So another major change in my workflow is Obsidian. Now I haven't been using Obsidian as much these last few weeks simply because I've been using Emacs so much, but I still have to do, I still have Obsidian here and I still use it as my main note-taking application because it is so damn good. And it syncs with through my Nextcloud with and then I use Quillpad on my Android phone to edit my notes and stuff. It's a fantastic note taking situation. I have no interest in changing it. For those of you guys who know me with the terms in terms of notes, you guys know that I change note taking solutions all the time. I have no interest in doing that anymore. Obsidian and Quillpad are fantastic and they are mine forever. So there's that. Now the next change, and maybe the biggest change, is this one. So, you guys know, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, that I'm a huge Crusader fan. I've made a video telling people that Crusader is my favorite Linux application. And it's still very good, but I don't need it anymore. I, I don't require all the packages that it comes with. I don't need all the functions. I don't do any dragging and dropping hardly anymore at all. I just use portals for everything when I need to open up an app, uh, open up a file. When I need to use a file manager, Ranger's where it's at. Ranger continues to be the best terminal file manager out there. I know people are going to say, hey, have you used Yazi? Yes, I've used Yazi. It doesn't do the things that I want to do. The configuration is more of a mess than Rangers is. I don't I don't like it as much. And I just haven't been able to get it where I need it to be. So Ranger, where I have a configuration file that is 10 years old, it, it's just the best thing for me. It works really, really well. I have all my key bindings. So if I want to go home, I can go home. If I want to go to my videos file, I can go to my video file. I can do all this stuff with key bindings. It has tabs. So if I want to do a tab, I can open up a tab and go home here and then go back to the other tab. You can see them up there in the right hand corner. It's, it's very, very good. It works exactly the way I want it. I do have two instances of it open. So I usually use the one that's in a scratch pad to change wallpapers when I want to do a, 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 a change to and I don't know why I have so many duplicate wallpapers. I have no clue. I have to fix that eventually. I have like all these things here that are just completely duplicate. But anyways, if I want to change wallpaper, I could do that. And it would change the wallpaper eventually. Wall is going to find find one there. Uh, and, you know, that's basically why I have one. I have two instances of it. Instances of it. The last one I want to talk about is Element. So I've been trying to spend a little bit more time in the Matrix channel that I created years and years ago. <laughs> I don't know about years and years ago, but it's been a couple of years anyways. I have a, I have a matrix server for the Linux cast. Very few people actually use it, but I figure if one of the reasons why very few people use it is because, well, I'm not here very often. So I have installed Element. It's still just as clunky as it always has been. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't I don't see any major improvements from the last time I used it which was well over a year ago but it works fine uh, but and, but I've had it open for a couple days you know I've been able to message a few people back and forth that I haven't seen in a while because they just don't use uh, discord so uh, I have it here I'm using it a little bit and that's the last one I wanted to show you so or those are some of the new applications or changes that I've made to my workflow over the course of the last few months now Emacs is temporary. I'm 100% convinced of that. Eventually, the, the guy I did a, a, a bet with will lose his part of the bet, and I'll be able to go back to NVIM. The rest of the stuff I'm actually fairly happy with, so I really like using Ranger. I really like using Obsidian. Zoxide is amazing. It's like the best thing ever. Uh, NixOS, obviously, is going to be around for the next almost two years. I'm only 40 days into the, into the challenge, so that's going to be around for quite a while. So... The changes I've made are, are pretty 
major, at least for me, at least they feel that way because they have to come. A lot of them have changed the way that I use Linux, so like NixOS, a completely different way of managing my setup. The note, the note stuff, obviously completely different than the way that I did it before. Ranger is a completely different thing than using a full fledged GUI file manager. So I, 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 this, these, a lot of these changes feel like major changes. So I wanted to share them with you and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have things that you have in your setup that you'd like to share, leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. There you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that I put up for, for my supporters. Basically, it's just me sitting in front of a microphone for about 15 minutes or so, just rambling on about Linux and technology and all sorts of stuff. So I've talked about a lot about my Mac over there. So if you guys are interested in me talking about the Macintosh, you can do that. Uh, you can go over there and support me and hear about that. I've talked a little bit about Emacs over there and a lot of racing stuff. So if you're interested in that, patreon.com slash LinuxCast or hit the subscribe button down there on the YouTube stuff. If you're interested in supporting me in another way and getting merch in return, you can go on over to the store, which is available at shop.linuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of stuff, including this hat, other hats, t-shirts backpacks stickers all sorts of stuff all the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more linux content for you guys so thanks everybody who has done that thanks everybody who supports me on patreon and youtube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you guys very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it i, I know that the economy is horrendous so if you've managed to throw some coins at my at me i really do appreciate it uh also don't actually throw coins at <laughs> me that would hurt. <laughs> I just don't. I don't know why I decided to say it that way, but I did. So you guys know me in endings. I think I'll probably end it here before I ramble on for another 20 minutes, just trying to say goodbye. So thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.